Let's go live now to Ali Latifi. He's in the eastern province of Paktia. So the authorities there are appealing for international, more international aid. Are they getting it, though? They're slowly getting it. Uh, earlier today, we saw World Food Program trucks p uh, passing by. We know that the International Rescue Committee has started uh, deploying mo mobile medical units. Uh, but the assistance is still slow to come. We're currently at the Paktia Army Corps. And here on this tarmac is where helicopters will land and transport the injured to uh, ambulances that will then take them to the regional hospital here. But once they get to the regional hospital here, it's another issue in that it, the hospital doesn't have proper emergency equipment and it may not be able to treat head injuries. And so in that case, they will have to go by land to the city of Kabul, which is another four or five hours away. So again, it shows sort of in this disaster setting, the kinds of shortcomings with which the government is currently operating. Mm. Now, what, how much of a window of opportunity exists to get aid in? They're appealing for help, but people are trapped under rubble, right? So every minute, if not every hour, counts. It, it, it's ex exactly. It's extremely urgent. You know, we were talking to a pilot earlier who was piloting one of the aircraft, and he was saying that when he lands in Paktika, you know, hundreds of people just swarm towards the helicopter, trying to get their sick and injured on board, trying to get attention, trying to get out and get to a better hospital as much as, ho uh, as, much as possible. And he was saying that as many as the people who come and seek help to, to get out into uh, the, city, uh, the city of Gazez, there are just as many still trapped under the rubble. And obviously the assistance was, you know, hindered yesterday by the inclement weather. And then that also impacts, you know, the condition of the people that are being treated. A lot of people may have died just by being stuck under the rubble. Others, you know, are facing serious medical conditions because of how long it's taking them to get to a proper hospital, whether that be in Gaziz or if they have to be transported to Kabul. And as you're talking, we were looking at pictures next to you. of People were picking through rubble with very basic instruments, it looked like. What kind of international help, what kind of help or aid or supplies do they need there? So they need helicopters, for sure. Uh, that, that's one major issue is, you know, helicopters come and go once every hour or so, but they can only take so many people with them at a time. So the more they are, there are, because the roads are so difficult to get to, and because yesterday, you know, there was rain and hail, that there would be uh, flooding and landslides and things like that, they really need air support at the moment. They also need, as you said, assistance in terms of, you know, excavators and other kinds of large scale equipment to get people out because people have been trapped under the rubble since, you know, very early yesterday morning at this point. All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for that update, Ali Latifi.